All right, so a little bit of an update to the Pokemon versus Pal World lawsuit. Now, in case you didn't see the last video, uh, Nintendo has decided to sue Pal World, and it's going to be for different reasons than I mentioned in that last video. Uh, it's for patent reasons. There's intellectual property and like things like character design that falls into IP and all that other stuff. But then there's patents too that people can file for. And uh, that stuff is more in the world of video games, like like hardware design and how hardware functions, or software design and how the gameplay works in certain games. You don't usually see patent lawsuits for video games. It's, that's because, in general, there's like more of a honor system amongst game publishers, where they don't typically go after one another over like a gameplay mechanic or something like that. It's more so like to protect themselves by making those patents so that someone else couldn't make that patent and then kind of put a freeze on another game company. It's usually a defensive sort of uh, purpose to do that in the game industry. But today, that is not the case. Nintendo is going to war on PAL World based off of patents. And so what patent could Nintendo possibly own that would cause them to move forward with a lawsuit against PAL World? Pokemon Legends Arceus actually did precede PAL World and they did make patents for things like throwing the Pokeball and having it catch the Pokemon. And then on top of that, there's also just the auto battling mechanic with the Pokemon too. So Nintendo actually does own the rights to that gameplay. And so that is what they're probably going to use in their lawsuit against Pal World. Now, do I think that this is something that they actually were mad about and that, that this is the reason why they're going to, to court against Pal World? No, I think that it's very, very obvious that Pal World became an overnight success. Incredibly impressive sales figures and Nintendo probably hated that because specifically the characters look very, very similar to Pokemon, but I do think that Pal World actually did properly cover their bases here. They actually didn't uh, use any designs that could be used in a court of law. Otherwise, Nintendo probably would have added that to the lawsuit or made a separate lawsuit for that. No, instead, they kind of just got away with getting really, really close to the original designs while at the same time, too, being legally clear. And I still think that Nintendo is probably more upset about that and also just the fact that it got so popular. You know, if it was just like one of those games that made like, I don't know, like 70,000 to 150,000 units sold, Nintendo probably wouldn't care to even make this lawsuit in the first place. But because it got so popular and it did sort of shift their public image in terms of quality and success and everything like that, Nintendo feels like they probably got actual damage from Pal World existing. And so I think that this is probably why Nintendo has gone to this, in my personal opinion, petty route of using patents to try to take down Pal World. Now, why do I say the term petty? Because I kind of referenced it a little bit earlier, but uh, like I said, in the game world industry, they don't typically go after one another for patents. They make them as a sort of like safety mechanism, but there's just lots and lots and lots of instances where Nintendo and many other companies, they'll create patents for certain games and certain gameplay mechanics, but then choose not to sue other publishers uh, for, you know, infringing on that patent. This is basically something that people don't talk about very often in the game industry. It's, it's essentially like an honor system where they have the right to do so, but they choose not to, to play along and go, get well with other game companies and stuff like that. There's one example where Nintendo actually did sue somebody over patent infringement, but the circumstances of it were very, very justifiable. I think like in this particular instance with Pal World, You'll get my opinion over and over again. I think that this is kind of scummy on Nintendo's part, but there's it's more nuanced than that. I'll get to that in a second. But like in this other instance, like it was completely justifiable. A mobile game company that was actually uh, had a very successful game in Japan. And so what they ended up trying to do was they were actually going to try to patent the idea of like moving your your thumb on a touch screen and having the, the, the basically the digital analog stick follow your thumb. And Nintendo actually already got that patent with the Nintendo DS. And Nintendo has left alone many, many mobile games that used this, this mechanic. And again, it's part of the honor system of not going after every single company that uses this analog stick idea. 
but this particular cell phone game company wanted to make their own patent on it and they started sending out emails to various companies including like other cell phone games and i believe even nintendo themselves and said like hey you can't use this patented idea unless you give us a fee and nintendo was sort of like nah you know honor system dis dishonored and so we're going to come after you and tell you that we already have this patent and you know there was apparently even many discussions before they even took them to court so they had many many opportunities to basically be like okay we're sorry and just kind of walk away but they they kind of stood their ground and so a lawsuit ensued over this patented gameplay mechanic so Again, that is a great example of how normally the honor system amongst patents typically works. But Nintendo, kind of having no other choice, is deciding to break the honor system and go after PAL World uh, with these patents. I personally think that, obviously, what Nintendo is really more upset by is the fact that it looks so similar to Pokemon and that there are some elements, of course, that are Pokemon-like, while at the same time, too, it's very Breath of the Wild-like as well. And the fact, of course, that it got so successful that it is now starting to edge closer and closer to getting to shoulder length with the Pokemon company. And Nintendo doesn't like that. You know, it's kind of fun to be at the top and it's kind of fun to look down at all the, the little guys trying to trying to get to your level of success and scoffing and laughing at it and letting them try to do their thing. But once you actually start to see someone actually scale the mountain, I think that's when they were sort of like, what can we do, you know, because um, we don't want this competition. And also, let's be honest, it is a little scummy on Pal World's part to have designs that are so similar in art style to the Pokemon companies, because that obviously creates some level of brand confusion in a legal way. So, Nintendo decided to look at it from other angles, in my opinion, this is speculation, but like, look at it from other angles and say, like, how can we take these guys down if we can't take them down for, um, you know, character designs and stuff like that and they found their answer through the patent so they're going to be using the patent system sort of uh, breaking the honor system of of how the patents are typically used in the game industry to go after pal world and damage their brand or take down their game entirely and i personally think that this is very very petty i think this is like a very very uh, scummy, icky sort of way to to take down competition. I do think that Power World is very different in its own right, and that it's clearly not Pokemon. And I don't think any little kid or parent or anybody is going to see the words Power World and think like, "Oh, this is Pokemon related." So, in other words, like yes, while it's very similar to Pokemon, it is a true competitor in my eyes. And uh, while I do kind of also think that lifting some assets from Pokemon clearly like I'm gonna have bloops put on the screen uh, particularly the cat pal world character where it has like the same eyes and smile as another Pokemon character I think that that's kind of scummy but not scummy enough that you're gonna destroy like a whole bunch of people's careers you're probably gonna tank an entire game company just so that you can have Pokemon once again be completely uncontested as the monster capturing um, IP so yeah, I don't like what Nintendo's doing here. Uh, I do think that they could win this case very easily because, again, patent lawsuits are just something that we hadn't seen a lot of, but they are definitely a utilizable tool to take down competition or people that are doing scummy things in the game industry. It's just that we don't typically see it very often, and so like, it's kind of shocking probably to me and to a lot of you that are even less informed on the whole uh, patent lawsuit thing in Nintendo's history because you'd think that like oh well if they could just use patents to sue people Why haven't they done it many times in the past? I kind of just outlined it for you Nintendo really has ulterior motives to using this patent lawsuit is 100% to take down a Intellectual property that they personally don't like because it does damage the reputation of the Pokemon brand So there you go. Those are my two cents. Um yeah, if you want more information on that, that case that I mentioned with the touchscreen and all that, uh, there's a Thomas Game Docs video that outlines this incredibly well. I'll leave a link to that in the video description so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, it's a very fascinating video and, you know, it might help you kind of understand that I'm not just talking out of my butt here. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this keeps you a little bit more informed about what the details of the case are, uh, what 
Nintendo's reason is for it and also what the history is behind this particular lawsuit that Nintendo is doing. If you feel any differently about how I felt about the morality between the two things, because I know that Power World's a moral gray area, I would say like it is somewhat like you, you could go against some people's personal morals. It's like imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Are we all right here? I, I don't personally go by that phrase. I do actually think that, yeah, if you really like respect another creator's work, you kind of do what you can to lift that up, not steal it. So I always kind of hated the phrase, imitation's the most sincerest form of flatter flattery. I don't even agree with that statement. But that being said though, like Pokemon has had a very, very long run of being primarily uncontested. Everything else like Digimon and stuff like that, they pale in comparison to something like Pokemon. And finally we had something that actually can can somewhat stand so shoulder to shoulder with Pokemon, or we're starting to with Pal World, and it was kind of nice to see for once. While I don't say imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, I do uh, personally believe that yes, uh, competition um, breeds, you know, um, better quality products from yourself because you want to maintain the top over your competition. It pushes you to be better. And Pokemon definitely needs to be pushed to be a bit better when it comes to the quality of their games. I think we can all agree on that for as fun as they are. Again, you know, those are my two cents. If you feel completely differently, uh, please let me know in the comments section. I read the comments all the time, so like if you have a different opinion too, you know, so long as you state it uh, respectfully, I love reading it out. So, you know, if someone has like a, a counterpoint especially that uh, is particularly interesting, and worth a, worth a read, I might even pin it in my comments section. All right, guys. Well, anyways, thank you so much for listening and take care.